Hello Magic Makers, welcome to Storytime with Mombirilla. This is a young adult fiction and may be inappropriate for some younger viewers. The Beast Within, A Tale of Beauty's Prince by Serena Valentino. Copyright, Disney Enterprises Incorporated, 2014. Chapter 21, Beauty and the Beast. The Odd Sisters were in a panic. Even they could see Belle was warming up to the Beast. And the Beast, well... He was experiencing something quite unique to him and utterly terrifying to the witches. They had to do something. They had their hands full, keeping watch over Belle and the Beast, and now Gaston as well, since they had sent Flans to keep an eye on him. They were so consumed, they never left the house for fear they'd miss an opportunity to sink their claws further into the prince's withering heart. "'Just look at them playing in the snow,' hissed Ruby. "'Disgusting!' spat Martha." Look at the way she looks at him, peeking at him coyly from behind the tree. You don't think she's falling in love with him, do you? screamed Lucinda. She couldn't possibly. The sisters spent all their time now spying on Belle and the Beast, and with each day their panic grew. It was becoming painfully clear. They were falling in love. Those damp servants aren't helping. They can try romance at every opportunity, squealed Ruby. Ruby, Martha, and Lucinda must have looked a mess when Cersei returned from her visit to Morningstar Castle. When they heard her come in, the three of them turned as one, startled to see their little sister standing in the doorway. Oh, oh hello, hello, they said together, looking frightfully tired and rather crazed from long nights of fretting, spying, and plotting. Cersei could see something was amiss. What is all this? Cersei asked. Lucinda tried to put on her best face though having not seen herself in a mirror for several days, she had no idea how frightful she looked. "'What do you mean, dear?' she said with a twitch and sputter. Cersei narrowed her eyes, looking as though she were scanning her for some shred of the truth. "'This place is a disaster. What on earth have you been up to?' The outsisters just stood there. For once they had nothing to say. Lucinda's ringlets were tangled much like a bird's nest, with little bits of dried herbs and candle wax stuck within them while Ruby's red silk skirts were covered in gray ash, and the feathers in her hair were sticking out at an even stranger angle than usual. And poor Martha, her face was smudged with some kind of orange powder. They all stood there before their little sister, acting as if their appearance was as normal as could be, like Cersei was stupid, or didn't have eyes in her head to see they were up to some sort of trickery. Spell work, I see, Cersei scolded. You know whatever you're doing. I've decided I don't want to know, honestly. I don't feel like dealing with whatever it is. So is anyone going to ask me how it went with the sea witch? Ruby croaked her reply. And how was it, dear? Did you send their greetings? Cersei gave a start at the sound of her sister's voice, but kept her questions about what they'd been doing to herself. She's very well, and was quite pleased with the exchange. She went on. You know, out of all the strange friends, I like Ursula best. She's very amusing. The sisters laugh croakily, their voices wrecked from their endless chanting. Cersei couldn't keep herself from asking this time. Seriously, what have you been up to? Look at yourselves, you're a mess. And what happened to your voices? Why are you so hoarse? The sisters looked at each other with a nod from Lucinda. Ruby took a necklace out of her pocket. We got you this! She dangled the pretty little necklace from her fingertips, swinging it back and forth in an attempt to distract her. It was a beautiful necklace, braided silver, with light pink stones. Yes, we got you a present, Cersei, said Martha, as Cersei narrowed her eyes at her scheming sisters. Do you think I'm stupid and so easily distracted? Martha frowned theatrically. We thought you would like it. Try it on. Lucinda ran toward Cersei like an excited little child, her pale face haggard, and her red lips smudged. Yes, try it on. I think you will look lovely. Lucinda went behind Cersei to put it around her neck. Okay, fine. Let's see what it looks like, if it will make you happy, Cersei said. And when Lucinda fastened the clasp, Cersei slumped into her sister's waiting arms. That's right, little sister. Sleep. The three witches carried Cersei into her room and placed her on the soft feather bed where she slept blissfully, so her sisters could continue their fiendish deeds undisturbed. We will wake you when it's over, our sweet little sister, and you will thank us for avenging your broken heart. No one hurts our little sister. Shh, you'll wake her. Nothing will wake her, not until we take the necklace from her pretty little neck, 
She won't be angry with us, will she? Oh, no, she couldn't be. We're doing this for her own good. Yes, her own good. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you haven't had a chance to, please take a second, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, comment down below, share with a friend, and check out some of the other villain series chapters and books as well. Join us next time, and remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day. Bye.